My fellow tech bros, your boy has been in the trenches. I have been grinding away, building out a brand new feature for my latest SaaS tool, Perfect Interview AI. And this feature I originally thought was only gonna take one week, but I ended up taking three weeks to launch instead because it became way more complicated than I had ever thought when originally I thought it was gonna be super simple. So I was totally wrong with my scoping and my predictions for how complicated this feature is gonna be. But your boy is finally out of the trenches. I'm alive, I can breathe again, and I'm excited to talk about this brand new feature with you. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the brand new feature that I launched why I built it, how I came up with this idea for the feature. And then I'm going to walk you through some of the technical challenges that I faced in terms of launching this feature and building this feature, because going from one week prediction to three weeks of actually launching this is a pretty big, grossly underestimation, just bad prediction on my end of trying to figure out how hard this feature is going to be. So anyways, let me show you this brand new feature that I built and walk you through it. All right. So for those of you that are new to this channel, I'm building a tool called the perfect interview.ai. And originally perfect interview started off as a AI tool that helps people generate interview questions based off of any job description that they upload as well as their resume. We use all that info to generate personalized interview questions for that job based off of your resume, but it has now kind of expanded to becoming an end to end suite of tools for everything that you possibly need to land a job and make some money. So we first launched this interview question generator. That was the very first feature. And then we launched this interview co-pilot tool, which uh, lets you <clears throat> cheat on your interviews by listening in on your interviews in real time, detecting questions and answers answering them live in real time. Another video coming up on this one about how the feature kind of flopped. So if you want to see more details about how, why this feature hasn't been doing too well, then make sure to subscribe and you'll get notified when that video drops. But the latest feature that I added and the one that I personally am the most excited for is the AI resume builder. Essentially, it lets you create a professional resume through natural conversation with our AI assistant. Let me walk you through a quick demo of what that is like. So you can actually go in and try to build out this resume builder demo. This was a horrible experience that I went out to build. But essentially from here, this is what the kind of the experience is like. It's a chat interface to chat and build your resume. So you can request a change and then it'll take that change and apply it automatically into your resume here. And then eventually once you're done with it, you can download your resume. So that's a demo experience, but pff, we're not here for demos. We're here to actually do it live, baby. This is the live experience, the chat to resume feature. So what you can do, it's a very chat GPT, like 2025 AI era, LLM era experience of just a simple chat window and it handles all the magic for you behind the scenes. So here I could type a response like blah, 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 blah. But I think even more interesting lately, the big trend in software development and AI is actually vibe coding. If you're not familiar with vibe coding, it's essentially letting the LLM build out an entire application to code an entire application and you do it completely using your voice. So this voice interface is really trending in software development right now with AI. And that's where I got this inspiration to go with this voice approach as well. So instead of typing, you can actually chat with our AI assistant using your natural voice to build out a resume. So then when you're here, I actually think it's a way better experience to use the microphone and chat with it using natural English and using your voice. So I can say, hi there, my name is your average tech bro and I am a software developer and YouTuber. And then it'll transcribe the entire thing and then you submit it and then you just keep going back and forth with the AI assistant to gather enough information to create that initial draft of your resume. So I'm not gonna make you listen to an entire interview where I go over my previous work experience and instead I use ChatGPT to generate this completely random job experience text box as if I was talking about myself. So if you submit it, what you're gonna see is we gathered enough information to create that initial resume. So we're gonna spit out that initial resume and then you can continue to chat back and forth with it to make edits in real time using the chat interface. And oof, your boy got hit with his own paywall. Let me give myself premium access real quick. Quick pause in the video, but I do wanna make a small announcement. You probably don't know this, but I do not do sponsored content. I think it ruins the content. I think it's annoying to do. And I think it ruins the credibility of the creator of giving an objective opinion about a certain tool, software, or product that someone's trying to offer. So I do not do any sponsored content, but your boy still wants to be able to do YouTube, do SaaS building full time. And with that in mind, I do offer a one on one consulting service. You can check it out at youraveragetechbro.com. You can book just a one off call with me to chat with me for an hour and I can help you out in terms of how to build an app, how to market your app. Or you can book a monthly package with me where you can text me as many times as you want 24 seven and also get four calls a month with me at your time of choosing. So if you really want to work with me one on one, you want to get my thoughts on how to help build your application or how to help market your application, hit me up, youraveragetechbro.com. That's where you can find me. All right. Anyways, 
back to the video. All right, so we just refresh the page. We now have full access to the resume. And actually, I'm gonna talk about the paywall a little bit later in the video. We're running an experiment there that I think is gonna be pretty interesting. All right, so now we have the initial resume, but let's say I wanna start adding more details and more information. So right now I'm gonna add some additional changes using my voice and natural text-to-speech. So add another work experience for my experience at Meta, where I worked there from 2020 to 2023. I worked in the Meta ads team and just make up any information about any random work experience of a full stack engineer and the work and impact that they had on the meta ads team. And then we send that off and then you can create these edits conversationally completely using chat to build out your resume. As you can see, the edit just came back and it created my new meta ads experience right here. And you know, this is obviously made up, it's not real, but that is how it is. So obviously this is made up and it's not actual real work experience, but you get the general gist of how this works. It's a chat to resume feature or as a Gen Z like to call it and how we're gonna try to brand it in the marketing, yap to resume, you know? So what's really nice as well, obviously you can do stuff like edit it in the old school way of like this resume editor, but you can also download the resume and get the finished resume as you want. But that is the general gist of this product. And I think that this is relatively new novel in terms of this chat to resume experience, at least for my very brief like competitive research and competitive analysis of other AI resume builders. It's still very much so just traditional resume builder with just AI sprinkled into it. Whereas this one I think is a much more native LLM AI native experience. And actually a really big inspiration for me in terms of building out this feature has been using Cursor, which is my AI code editor of choice. The UI is pretty simple. It's chat to code, right? And that's where I got the idea for chat to resume. You know, I've used Cursor literally every single day for hours on end in my own personal work. So this idea was a pretty easy transition into this chat to resume feature. And I think a really good place to search for ideas for features or maybe even full blown products as a developer specifically is looking at what's trending in the software space and trying to apply it to an industry outside of software. So like I mentioned earlier, vibe coding is a really big example. You're seeing tons of content, tons of tweets lately about people coding completely using their voice, using a tool like Super Whisper to do transcription anywhere they want on their computer and then just play pasting in that text block into their AI code editor of choice, whether it be Cursor, Windsurf, Replit, Bolt, Lovable, you name it. So I saw this really big trend of voice as being the primary UI medium that's being really popular in software. So that's where I wanted to take that and apply it into a non-software engineering, non-developer space of chat to resume. So I think there's something really exciting that you can find there, especially if you're a developer. See what's trending in the developer space and how can you take that and apply it to a product outside the developer space. Now, why did it go from taking one week to taking three weeks to build out this entire feature? Number one, the feature was more complex than I had expected. We had to figure out how to structure the data in the back end to really fit any type of resume, to be super flexible and fit any type of resume format. And the solution that I came to with the help of ChatGPT, actually not ChatGPT, with the help of Claude 3.7 Sonnet specifically, was by creating two primary resume types of sections. So in the super base, in my Postgres schema, you have the parent resumes table, but then within the resumes table, they have children tables for resume detail sections and a resume list section. A work experience is an education is an experience of this resume detail section where people can write down these bullet points and explain more details about the various parts of that section that they want to add to. And a resume list experience is what the skills section down here uses. It's really simple. It's just a simple list of text, et cetera, et cetera, no additional fancy details. So that was one part of it. And then to power this all in the back end, let me show you. What I end up doing is I take the entire transcript of the initial user interview, and then in the generate and API endpoint, we actually extract all of the initial base sections one by one. So if you see here, let me try to find the code. I extract the personal info once, extract education in history, extract work experience, extract skills. I have one dedicated LLM call to extract each of these items from the initial conversation the user has with the AI model. Now, I originally tried to do it all within one shot, just like return all of this at once, but it just didn't really quite work that well. It might've been too much context, too much output actually, just because these AI models do have a limit in terms of how much text and content that they can output. And I'm using Gemini 2.0 Flash for this, for those of you curious. So I just found splitting it up one by one was a lot simpler. And then a really big feature, I think many, many people need to use when trying to use LLMs is creating a using structured responses with your LLM provider. So if you're using any Gemini or OpenAI, I'm pretty sure Claude has this too, but you can specify the output schema you want the output to be in. And the way that I do this is by using the Vercel AI SDK and then specifying this resume schema. It's a Zod object that details the entire structure of the JSON object that I wanted to return. And I just do that with the resume, as well as the resume sections, the resume list section, the resume 
detail section. So that's how I make sure the data comes back in a proper format every single time. And I don't have to worry about the data coming back in an unsupported format because I specify it within this Zod schema. And then the output is forced to come out in that way. That's a little bit from the technical perspective of what made it difficult, but actually what made it more difficult and what made it go from taking only one week to taking three weeks to build out is just a lot of the little things, the things that the various edge cases and the things that you got to do to create a better user experience. I got the chat to building the resume and chat to editing that resume experience done really quickly within three, four days, maybe one week tops. But everything after that was like proper retry handling, making sure when the, if the LLM throws an error, how do we retry to make sure that we get some type of response at the end and the user doesn't get an error response. And also at the end, how do we handle errors properly? You know, how do we make sure that when an error message comes back, there's some UI and an interface for the user to retry really, really quickly. Another thing that we had to focus on was rate limiting. You know, they're pretty cheap these days, but you still want to make sure you don't get any bad actors. And then you have to implement rate limiting as well to make sure that you don't get anyone that abuses your website. And for me, when building a new feature, something I've been really indexing high on is that new feature education process. I think previously, and a lot of people do this, and I'm, I do this all the time too, when I build a new feature, you kind of just drop it out there and expect like, yeah, I hope the users use it. <laughs> but most of the time they don't. They need to be had to have their hand held through that process a little bit more. And they need that aid of discovery and to experience that feature in a much more structured, a sandbox environment. And the way that I did that as well was by creating a resume builder demo, this little demo pro experience here. Now, another way that they can discover this is when they go to try to create the resume, they're like, oh, very cool, let's create resume. And before they go out and try to create it themselves, they might wanna see, oh, how does it work? So creating this demo experience up here was a whole ordeal. Because in your head, you're kind of like, oh, I already have all the code to actually create the real resume. Creating this demo experience, it's gonna be super easy. It's gonna be like copy and paste, it should work immediately out of the box. Now, that could work out of the box technically, but you wanna make sure that people don't abuse your resume demo. But I wanted to make sure people didn't abuse this resume builder demo where they kind of create a resume for free on their own using our demo experience. So that instead I had to scale it back a little bit, take away certain features such as right here, they can't actually type in the changes that they want. They can only make these very specific designated changes that I created so that they can't just tell the LLM like, yo, destroy this entire resume and remake it using my personal work experience, right? Any type of demo experience, I think it's not as easy as you would think where it's like copy and paste of the original feature. If anything, it's own entirely separate feature because it really is, it has completely different UI and UX to build it all out. And what's really interesting is the fact that just because I am cheap and I don't want to spend actual any LLM cost in terms of letting people experience this demo experience is these are not actually calling the LLM at all. Each of these things, each of these edits that you can make, these are all hard coded by me in the back end. It's our little secret. Don't tell anybody. But it's not actually making an LLM call. The output is predefined in a way such that I can guarantee the quality is really high. And then when it presses button, you see that it looks like it's making an API call. I'm actually just telling the code, hey, wait five seconds before you make this change to simulate an API call. So I think you can be really crafty with how you create these demo experiences for different features and different projects that you build because you want to showcase the best in-class edits that it can possibly make. You want to showcase the best case scenario of that feature that you're building out and you want to make sure you leave nothing to chance, especially with LLMs. You never know how they're going to respond to any type of prompt. So I think that's a really key unlock. So if you want to go out and try to build your own demo experience for a feature that you're building, make sure it's really highly curated and you can guarantee a really really high quality experience for them as well. Last but not least, because of this new feature we're launching, we're actually testing a new pricing model. We're testing subscriptions as well. We're testing a subscription process. Previously, we had a one-time purchase model, which I'm a big proponent of, but we want to run an A-B test of subscriptions versus one-time purchase, the same exact pricing model and everything. Just want to see how it affects the conversion rates. Because now that we have this resume builder and interview question builder and interview co-pilot, maybe a subscription offering is more compelling because you can get unlimited access to it rather than a credit-based one-time purchase system that we were doing previously. That is a quick overview of the changes, the brand new feature that I launched, the AI chat to resume builder. It was really hard, took a lot longer than I expected, but I'm pretty bullish, pretty excited for the results that are to come. And if you are interested in the results, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a video talking about everything about how the entire feature goes. If you have any questions or comments about this feature, about this whole process, leave them down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them as best as I can. But without further ado, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.